this is one that's been, you know, following movies and Stephen King's work over the years. Uh, this is his masterwork. It's been, it's been attempted for virtually a decade, maybe longer. Why do you think it's taken so long to get to the big screen? I mean, it's, it's an epic piece of work. That probably is part of it, but give me a sense. Why do you think it's taken this long? Wow, I don't know, where do you begin? I mean, you know, you've got eight books to, mm -hmm. to try and, uh, you know, distill down into a film. That's a, a challenge, uh, you know, I, and I think that Stephen's work really does need some thought, you know. You, if you distill it too much, you lose what the readers love about it. And if you do just what the, the books are, I mean, that's a, like a nine hour movie, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what, I mean, you know, what Nikolai came forward, and I mean, Stephen obviously had approval over who went and made the first film on it. Now, you said it's been, they've been trying to for 10 years. At capacity. least, I would say. Well, they've talked about film, television. But it never made it. Never happened, yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose mm. it's the distillation of eight books down to something that was going to be a movie, not a series, mm. down to um, um, finding the right director, something that Stephen wanted and some of the studio wanted. But and I think part of it also is obviously like these two characters you play, they're kind of like classic archetypes, right, in, in a way. Like, I mean, I think Stevens even talked about like how like Clint Eastwood was kind of like the model in some ways for um, this, uh, the gunslinger. Um, your kind of personification of, you know, evil in, in, in the end. I mean, give me a sense, first of all, um, for you, you've played some pretty badass, cool characters in your career. How do you think the gunslinger stacks up? Uh, you know, probably one of the most agile <laughs> badasses I've ever played. You know, this guy's got an incredible skill with, with these guns, but he's very conflicted. He's a very conflicted man. He's a man whose heart's been stolen by, by the man in black. And, you know, <clears throat> there was a richness that was there, you know, uh, is, is there in the books, is there in the history uh, that I got to play with or, you know, try and sort of create into a real life character. Of course, I was, you know, I'm not Clint Eastwood, so obviously staying away from that was important, but at the same time, you know, trying to hold on to what the fans love about Roland was really, really at the tip of, you know, all of our consciousness, you know. We really wanted to make sure that the fans got a sense of who that person is, especially what they, you know, have read in a book, you know. That does, does carrying yourself without without being used too self conscious? You're a pretty cool guy. The way you ca both of you, frankly, yeah. and the way you carry yourself, there's just like a natural ease and confidence. It, does that? And again, like many of your characters have had that, whether it's Stringer Bell or Luther. I mean, in different ways, they have that He's, kind of. Yeah, you got a good gait, man. It's the gait. It's all about the walk. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a good swagger, man. Is that that's, it? That's lovely. It's, I mean, it's about forty percent of it, man. Well, I would say you can have somebody in a snapshot that looks really cool, but then they get up and walk, and you go, "Oh no, they lost it." But you got to have the right swagger. <laughs> I was well. Hey, not to. I was going to use the word swagger for the, your character yeah. too, because this is a guy. You know, it's one thing to play the bad guy, but. He's got a swagger. He's kind of in, it, there's a glint in his eye. Yeah. Well, that was one of the first, I mean, I talked to Stephen King once, and I went up, first came aboard, and I said, give me one line, you know, uh, a diving board. It's just something to get my mind going. He goes, he's got the world by the string, and, and I think he's at a shit-eating grin or a Cheshire cat grin the whole way, so he's enjoying it. Um, look, this was my first dive into, you know, Walter's not the devil, but I sure did approach it. Like, what would the devil do? Right. And um, a lot of it was in the books, and then, uh, but this is the first time I've done it in a capacity that's like a big summer action thriller film yeah. franchise, big yeah. fun, you know? I mean, I've, I've, you know, walked close to that line with other characters that were more dramatic characters, but this had a certain panache to it that I found was going to be fun. Well, and I've mentioned this to you before, this is really your first franchise film, which yeah. is remarkable. Like, you know, you've been doing this for a bit now, and you've certainly obviously had opportunities. Yep. Um, and you've been frank in talking about how, like, Guardians 2 was something they came to you with. Yep. Um, and w was it in the end, like, a choice between these two things, and what was kind of the overriding No, there were, there were a few that came over the past few years that were already franchises that had been established, and ones that I even enjoyed. Um, but what, when they came to me, the roles for me felt a bit like amendments. Like, okay, hey, now the first one worked, let's bring you in in a, right. in a, in a really tasty role. Yeah. Um, and then when this came on, I was like, oh, well, good, I can be the author of this character, sure. Walter. I can get into the ground floor. We can begin with a whole new team and have yeah. a creation and have an original. And that just turned me on. Yeah. Do you think there's still room for Matthew in the Marvel <laughs> Universe as a veteran of the Marvel <laughs> Universe? How, where, where would you like to see Matthew fit into your comfy Marvel Universe? In, in Marvel world? Yeah. Oh, uh, he, I mean, you know, there's a couple of versions. He could be Thor's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew? I don't know Thor's dad. <laughs> Wait, isn't that that's, Mr. Tony Hopkins? Exactly. 
play a young version of him. Oh, I see Smash it. Smash it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Sorted. Hopkins, you're on notice. You're out of a job. <laughs> McConaughey is in. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I got a chance to see all your buddies uh, recently at Comic-Con for oh, yeah? Ragnarok, which... Yeah. Have you seen that? I've seen some footage, mm. which looks amazing. Taika mm. Waititi mm. told me that about 80% of the film was improvised. So yeah, pretty much, so yeah. <laughs> apart from the CG, of course. That's going to be insane. Did it feel like, do, do you, are you satisfied with what your character got to do this third go around? Because, you know, it's been tough to fit <clears throat> a lot of characters to serve in, the, in those stories. Yeah, look, Heimdall, you know, he, yeah, it's the horns and the, and the sword. We got rid of the horns, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is that your stipulation? You're like, oh, yeah. we're good with the horns no by now. No more horns, bro. Um, <laughs> but, no, Taika just approached Thor with a completely you know, different lens. Uh, gave us a little bit of liberty to, to play with the characters and, and, and take Asgard out of Asgard. So yeah. it's great, you know, I, I had a great opportunity, good time doing that film. How, how often on set, and I know you don't uh, share a ton of scenes together, but there's some key ones. How often do you actually hear Matthew say, all right, all right, all right? Is that a daily occurrence? Do you feel like you have to kind of like keep it limited to maintain its, its power? I don't believe Walter ever. I don't think he said that. No, it never came out of Walter's vernacular. He may be saving it. But, but even just walking around, do you find that, like, as Matthew, no. that comes up on a daily basis? You do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe that it comes out every hour. <laughs> no, it doesn't come out every hour. But it is my favorite Kickstarter. You know, I don't know if you know this story, but that's the first three words I ever said on screen. Really? Days of Confused. Oh. First three words I ever said on screen. And so it's a bit of a callback to right. that day, August the 12th of 1992, with Linkletter on set. And it's well, what were the first words you ever said on screen? Um, oh, oh, the first one was, my bike! <laughs> I played a, it was a, a guy who, it was, it, it was, I had some weird infomercial about locking up your bike, because <laughs> there were thieves about, right. and I played the guy that ran up the hill to only find my bike's gone, and I go, my bike! It might not be as good a catchphrase as, as all right, all right, no, all right, no, right. right. Didn't they hear that line come back nope. later on today? And they, we got about five more hours of that. <laughs> <laughs> I may say it. You're going to find a clip now. You're going to be like, hold up. Come on. It clearly applies to anything. Uh, you can use that in any, fr any right. situation. Very true. My bike. My bike. Doesn't really mean hey. anything, but... Um, I, I, when I was doing research for today, I noticed that um, our mutual friend Tom Hiddleston... Did you know Tom does an impression of you? Have you ever seen Tom's impression of I have seen that, yeah. It's a complete crap. <laughs> you know what, Tom, knock it off. It's terrible. Do you do impressions of your co-stars? Can you do a Tom Hiddleston? Uh, Tom Hiddleston's a bit like, well, yes, of course, you know. And, uh, you know, well, when I was on the set, you see, it was amazing, you know. That's a bit like that. <laughs> I was shit too, Tom, so. <laughs> right back at him. Right now back you're even. <clears throat> um, Matthew, you're a former and always sexiest man alive, according to People magazine. This guy's always on these lists. How can he turn the corner? How can he get to the top finally? Thanks. What, what can Thanks, take him Josh. to the top? Because it's inevitable. What does he need this to do? Is, you know, may not know this. this watch, it's going to happen real soon now. This is part of the campaign right yeah. here. I'm, I'm, I'm starting it, okay. and all credit to me. Oh, you're doing you're it? Welcome. Oh, okay. You track it back to this source's watch. You're right. Okay. It's about to happen. And, and the great thing about it is, remember mm. the title, Sexiest Man Alive. Mm. Not of the year, but alive. Alive, So yeah. once you get it, you're like, you got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forever, yeah, no. Yeah. As long as you maintain the gate. I've come like third or fourth, maybe once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> Does it really stick Let's in your Let's call crawl? it right now. What do you think? When's it come out this year? I don't know. Okay, the next one. Okay. Let's just call it. There'd be good odds on that, you're that you would be the next one. I think Josh should get it. Okay, calm down. Now, now you're just being mean. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're pretty sexy. You're let's, funny, let's, you're sexy, mm -hmm. you're smart, you're on TV. What the? I feel like Gollum sitting next to the two of you. I feel like a small, <laughs> like, misshapen mass of flesh. It's very upsetting, to be honest. <sighs> Better HBO dramatic series, True Detective or The Wire? Uh, I mean... <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to say, you know, The Wire um, shape-shifted drama, you know. Um, yeah, I think writers and directors and uh, TV producers thought, wow, if you can make five seasons of something that has a real current of reality to it and it become dramatically appealing to a mass audience in a way that is difficult to watch, right. let's do it. True Detective is an incredible piece of art. Uh, but followed suit. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. 
I'm just joking, buddy. Now yeah. I'll talk. <laughs> Your turn. Wait, how'd you start that off? The, the, the defense was. I just think that the wire was a, yeah. If we're going to talk uh, Emmy Awards and nominations. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm not, I don't watch that much TV. I don't even watch that many films either. But True Detective, and, uh, you know, yeah, I was in it and got to make it. But uh, um, I watched it every Sunday night religiously. It was the one thing that got me to go, I'm going to Sunday night, put the kids to bed. Sweetie, let's get in bed and watch this thing. And I, and I miss it. I actually miss it. I miss that Sunday night ritual of that, of that film. And I got to work with my buddy Woody, and Nick created such a words. You know, it was one of those things you talk about when you get good words. Yeah. Yeah. Holy, yeah, it does yeah, so. Yeah. It does, uh, does the work for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and anyway, Carrie, I love who it. we both love. That's right. Yeah, both Fuganaga both directs it. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, we both worked with. It was just, it, it worked. Have you heard that uh, Mahershala Ali is going to be starring in season three? He is. Perfect. Is he? Perfect. Whoa. There we go. Well That's deserved. Good. That's going to be. He's a great actor. That's going to be good. It's yeah. going to be really good. Is there anyone you would like to see like play around with Nick's words in that kind of universe? They're obviously not related, but Nick's mind is so fertile. Uh, um, any actor that you think would be cool in, as a tr in True Detective? You know, there's someone, one, uh, someone whose name's come up twice here. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. I'd love to see him with those. Somewhere, I don't know what role that would be. And then, uh, and Nick, you're out there. You and I speak all the time. We don't have those those words for me to come back. But if we get the right ones, man, let's talk. Nice. There it is. <laughs> Boom. You're the sexiest man alive, and we've cast Anthony Hopkins in the next True Detective. Matthew is really doing well today. <laughs> this is the first interview, by the way. Is so that right? Yeah, what just getting warmed up. Kicking it off. <laughs> um, talk to me a little bit about, obviously, the hope with something like this, because there's so much source material. There's been talk for years about also a TV series. Is there, is there active discussion in terms of, like, you'd be involved, it sounds like, if this goes forward in some capacity? With a TV yeah, series. yeah in some true? capacity, for sure. You know, um, I think that was part of the appeal of the job, is that it sort of crosses into formats a little bit. And then we get to, as you said, you know, author be be you know part of the DNA from the jump, so that's pretty exciting. Television's in such an incredible place at the minute, yeah. so that's a good uh, it's a good thing I think. Does it also just check something off the list to like you know you, you've been in every kind of manner uh, size of film, but to be the guy, to be the hero, to be an iconic hero like this and something like that, um, it's a long time coming, and I'm I'm excited for you in this and like you. I mean, you kill it. It's, a, it's amazing and to see you like in some of the action sequences in particular. Um, it's the few can hold the screen like you, sir. Thank um, you, man. Does it feel like you're, ch you're checking one off the list? You're like, yeah, this, this, is, this was a cool opportunity. I'm glad I made the most of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, <clears throat> I don't know about you, Matt, but you know, when you first start as an actor, you know, the, 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 the pinnacle is to be like, you know, open in a movie like this and being able to be that guy. And it definitely feels like a, a landmark for me in my career. You know, I've done some incredible roles and smaller as you say but this is exactly what it is it's a big summer blockbuster you know what i mean with with us at the helm and it's in, it's incredible i was really really actually i'm just gonna pay you a compliment right now but working with matthew was a real privilege but you know this is a man that you know holds the screen really well yeah and so the two of us you know getting to play like that was uh you know a privilege just like really good yeah stephen king uh, if the source material isn't enough for you when you hear this combo it's like okay i'm in